Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm uh, Nevila Jindi, for those who don't know me. Uh, I'm the coordinator of the project that brought us together. And uh, this event is organized by the Center Science and Innovation and Development in the framework of the UCIA project. And uh, I'm very pleased to be the moderator of the event today. The event is going to be held in hybrid way. I mean, now we are used to, but uh, thank you very much for the participation here in person. It looks like that we are missing it, meeting each other. The event is going to be in English the, because uh, online are our, our partners from Italy, from Germany and uh, from Serbia. So thank you for all of you that are online. Uh, thank you for participating and uh, being part of this event today. So dear colleagues and partners, dear Ms. Tole, Deputy Minister of Education and Sports, dear Ms. Sinakoli, uh, Program Officer for EU Delegation in Albania, uh, dear partners, dear colleagues, thank you for coming. Universities in Albania, are undergoing major transformative processes to consolidate their role in economy and especially in society. Albania has only recently started to develop policy instruments to enhance university to society collaboration. And the collaboration of universities with business, government, policy, civil society and media can contribute to the development of human capitals and talents and the creation of sustainable innovation ecosystem in resilient societies. Albania, like other countries in the Western Balkans, is part of the key European programs that support higher education, research, and innovation such as Erasmus+, Plus, European Solidarity Corps, Creative Europe, and Horizon Europe. The European Union has placed the Western Balkans as a priority in the region in the new Digital Education Action Plan, the European Education Area, and the European Research Area. However, Albanian universities face considerable challenges in these terms. Against this background, a consortium of partners from academia, policy, business, civil society, came together to develop a project proposal for the Erasmus Plus Capacity Building in Higher Education, a program from the European Union which aim to foster effective and sustainable university to society collaboration in Albania with impact in the development and European integration process in the country. The project we are here today, University to Society Intermediaries in Albania, co-production of knowledge and research that matters, is led by the Mediterranean University of Albania, which I represent today, and in partnership with 11 other partners in Albania, Italy, Serbia, and Germany, and promotes the Quadrupe Helix model in Albania and supports five partner universities in establishing and enhancing knowledge transfer and innovation brokerage units. This report that you will be, we will be presenting today is the result of the work package one, preparation for the UCIA project, leaded by the Center Science and Innovation for Development, SIDEF. The goal is to assess the current collaboration between university and external stakeholders in Albania, to inform the other work packages and activity of the UCIA project, and to provide recommendation for customizing UCIA project activity based in research finding and broader recommendation for stakeholders in Quadrupe Helix. So today we have uh, speakers and guests, uh, good collaborators, uh, partners, our partners that were part of, uh, in a certain way, they were part of the process of coming together today and launching this uh, study. So it's my pleasure to give the floor to Ms. Tole, the Deputy Minister for Education and Sport. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Të ndërruar organizator, të ndërruar pjesë marës, Ministria ju përgëzon për nismën në ndërmarë dhe punën e kryer deri më tani në lidhje me vlerësime në bashkëpunimeve Universitetë Shoqërinë në Shqipëri, 
Ministri Arsimit dhe Sportit në përmjet strategjis komtare të Arsimit 2021-2026, ka në fokus arsimin e lartë duke sunua një sistem gjithë përfshirës si plëtëson standartet ndërkomtare të cilësis, integritetit akademik dhe transparentës, si dhe është promotor i zhvillimit ekonomik dhe social në vënd. Një ndër objektivat specifik të strategjisë zhvillimore vënë fokus ndër lidhjen më të mirë të arsimit me tregu në punës, Arsimi lartë synon që të siguroj të diplomuarve aftësit e nevojshme për të pasur sukses në tregu në punës në përmjet zhvillimit të kurikulave, që i përgjigjen kontekstit të ekonomive të sotme të globalizuara, të drejtuara nga inovacioni dhe të bazuara në aftësi. Sistemet e arsimit të lartë përpishen të prodhojnë të diplomuar me një huri dhe aftësit të theksuara teknike profesionale, dhe të disiplinave specifike, cila doj qoft fusha e tyre e studimit. Zhvillimi programeve të reja të studimit do tjetë në përputhje me ekonomin, me zhvillimin ekonomik të vëndit, të ndërthurur me bashkëpunimin me universitetet partnere europiane dhe më gjërë. Një nga mekanizmat që do të përdoret për rritjen e cilsis në arsimin e lartë, është ndërkom të arizimi dhe bashkëpunimi ngusht të universitetetve shqiptare me universitetet më prestigjose në ndërkom të arem. Programet e studimeve profesionale të cilat janë të orientuar a drejt përvecimit aftësive praktike, do të duhet jenë më fleksibël për të plëtsuar nevojat a faqkurtra të tregu të punës. Institucionet e arsimit lartë, që gjënde në rajonet të ndryshme të vëndit, duhet të profilizohen si pas nevojave specifike të rajonet për katës. Kjo strategi synon të harmonizoj programet e institucioneve universitare me kërkesa dhe tregu të punës, Për të arritur këto objektiv, do të pasurohet oferta e programeve profesionale si dhe do të finansohen kualifikime në inovacion, design, marketing dhe kërkim shkencar. Programi synon kryimin e një registri qëndror të studentve të diplomuar në institucionet e arsimit lartë për të harmonizuar ofertën e arsimit të lartë si dhe kërkesën e tregut punës. Do të zhvillohen analizat të vazhdueshme të ecurist së studentve të diplomuar si pas sektorve në mënyrë që të ketë një orientim të kuotave si pas degve për katse në raport me kërkesat e tregut. Institucionet e arsimit lartë do të inkurajohen të hartojnë dhe të ofrojnë programet e formimit të vazhduar si formet mësuarit gjatë gjithë jetës si dhe të kryojnë projektet për bashkëta të bashkëpunimit me shoqatat e biznesit. Strategia synon gjithashtu që të rrisë numrin e mundësive për pun praktike në studimet e larta në përmjet kryimit të zyrave të karrierës pran institucioneve universitare. Objektiv mbetet gjithashtu promovimi i ndërdisiplinaritetit dhe programet e shkencës teknologjisë i njënjërisë dhe matematikës, të cilat do t'jem në fokus të drejt për drejt të nëzitjes të zhvillimit ekonomik të vëndit, pas i kryojnë specialist që kërkohen nga të regu i punës. Universitetet ka një rol shumë të rëndësishëm në shojqërim, duke kontribuar jo vetëm në zhvillimin e kërkimit shkencar dhe në shpërndarje në dijes, por dhe në përgatitjen e brezit të ri për të qënë konkurues në tregë. Ndryshimet socialet shekullit fundit kanë sjell një ndryshim të përgjithshëm të konceptit të tregu të punës, duke e bërë shojqërin që të ketë më shumë pritshmëri nda i universitetetëve. Dhe kjo do tjetë sfida jonë në të ardhmen, ajo që të mundësojmë një bashkëpunim më të mirë ndërmjet universitetetëve dhe tregu të punës. Falem derit. Falem derit, zonja tole. Kam të nejtë si... A, ok. Speak in English. Thank you very much. I have the pleasure to give the floor to Ms. Sina Koli, the program officer for the EU delegation in Albania. So thank you, Jenny, for coming. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Nevila, for inviting. Dear Deputy Minister, dear Nevila, dear participants, investing in education is the best thing that we can do for the future of our youth and for the future of our country. That's why uh, in the EU, we are help, helping the government of, Bain, of Albania through Erasmus Plus program, which probably ev all of you know. Uh, through Erasmus, we want to provide more opportunities for young people to increase mobility, support educational, social, personal, and professional development, enhance knowledge and skills, improve employability, stimulate innovation, and build a sense of European belonging. Most probably the best part of Erasmus Plus that you all know is the mobility. Mobility of students, of academic staff, and administrative staff. So far from Albania, there are around 8,000 Albanians that have done an exchange program or a master course in another EU country, including professors, academic staff, and students. 
but Erasmus is not just about mobility. It is also about universities. Through Erasmus, we uh, in Albania, Al Albanian universities have enhanced the capacities of academic and administrative staff, have improved their curricula, have opened new master courses. And I see some of the universities here that they have opened new courses and have been equipped with modern teaching equipment and laboratories. In addition, Erasmus Plus funds very interesting projects like the one that has gathered us today here. Digitalization, ever-increasing connectivity and other major trends are profoundly changing our lives and our economies. These trends raise crucial questions for public policies in the areas of labor market, skills development, future of education, and social protection systems. Therefore, a, a strong cooperation between all actors is very important. Albania and Western Balkans remains a priority for the European Union. Only a few days ago, on 6 October, Western Balkan countries and the EU member states, they signed the platform on education, innovation, research, culture, youth, and sport, which is a long, a uh, long-term cooperation strategy between EU member states and Western Balkans. We hope that it will promote scientific excellence as well as reform of the region's education system, create further opportunities for youth and help prevent brain drain. In addition, I have the pleasure to inform you that in 2022, uh, the EU will start the phase of EU for innovation. This section is expected to lay the foundation for a system change in the business environment, innovation ecosystem, and investment climate. It will build on specialization to strengthen research, technological development, and innovation in alignment with Green Deal in four areas, capacity development, improvement access to finance and startups, promotion and implementation of the quadruple helix approach and the promotion of Albania as a startup and innovation ecosystem and destination for international, international and domestic innovators and entrepreneurs. Uh, through investment in several sectors, including innovation, education, youth and sports, we uh, try to open more opportunities for young people to students, researchers, innovators, and cultural operators, including social uh, society organization, so that they can access new markets, become more competitive, and build sustainable uh, prosperity in Albania. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. There are some good news in, in, this, in your speech. Thank you very much. Uh, there are good news for the universities, for all our partners uh, maybe to apply for the next year for the EU for innovation. So what bring us together was uh, the study on university and society. So I'll leave the floor to my colleague, my old partner and uh, good friend, Leriana Bino. Uh, she's the executive director and co-founder of the Center for Science and Innovation for Development. This is a center who works uh, on the study. And uh, she will uh, present today the findings from the study Universities to Society Collaboration. The floor is yours there. Thank you very much, Navila, dear Mrs. Tolle, dear Ms. Inacoli, uh, dear colleagues, partners, uh, friends. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. This uh, topic is very close to my heart. So I am very grateful that you took time out of your busy schedule, I'm sure, and joined us in, um, um, in this effort to promote further the idea of the quadruple helix and the collaboration between university and other actors in society. Um, the SIDEF team has conducted, as Navila mentioned, the, um, um, an assessment of university to uh, society in Albania in 2021. And by society, we mean uh, policymakers, business representatives, um, um, civil society and media as well. This research uh, assesses the current levels and uh, practices uh, of uh, collaboration. And we try to provide some uh, recommendations as well for each of the stakeholders. 
Of course, this is a very complex topic, and we are talking here about a wide variety of uh, actors involved. So the study tries to uh, offer a comprehensive base baseline of the current cooperation and uh, attempt to uh, provide specific recommendations for universities, policymakers, but also business, civil society, and media on how to strengthen further this uh, much needed uh, uh, cooperation. We utilize the com uh, combined methodology approach just in terms of uh, um, uh, research design. We use the online survey, um, um, in-depth interviews, focus groups, and document analysis. The field work was conducted in April and, uh, till June uh, this year with a total of 219 um, um, online uh, surveys or questionnaires filled in by researchers in public and private partner universities. We did 17 uh, in-depth interviews with uh, representatives of the um, uh, stakeholders and then six focus groups. And I take this opportunity to thank all the partners who have uh, uh, facilitated the organization of uh, such uh, uh, field work and particularly the team that worked on uh, writing up the report. Abby and Erida are present here today, but also Teuta who has joined us uh, on Zoom, Orchidea and Nevila for reviewing the, the final report. Uh, the entire study lies on the um, um, idea of the repositioning role of the university in society, as was mentioned already by Ms. Tolle and Ms. Inakoli as well. Uh, universities have had an important role in society, serving not only as centers of knowledge, research, and innovation, but also in terms of preparing generations uh, for entering into the labor market. Social changes and the rapid technological development um, have forced, in a sense, the university to um, rethink and reposition its role in society. And the social and economic challenges that we face nowadays, including the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the climate uh, change or emergency, and the high polarization of, uh, of society, also due to the uh, advancement of technologies, have, of course, uh, put additional uh, pressure on universities and the work that they do. Uh, universities have uh, have responded to these uh, pressures by uh, embracing the idea of the third mission, um, which conceives universities as complex, multidisciplinary, and evolving actors in society that contribute not only to education uh, through teaching and research, but also to the social, economic, and uh, cultural development in their local communities. Um, so universities have embraced the idea of the triple helix, and I would ask Maggie to go back to the previous slide slide. Um, so the collaboration between university, industry, and government, and then considering the important role that civil actors play and media play, uh, this was um, um, expanded into the idea of a quadruple helix, which means uh, universities cooperating not only with the government and with the private sector, but also with civil society, including the media. And what we argue um, in the research, but also, I guess, as an entire project and consortium, is that this model needs to be further strengthened also in, uh, in our country. Uh, then the study, maybe you can move to the next slide, please, uh, looks into the legal and policy framework in Albania. And I would like to thank the, colleague, um, the colleagues from Nasri, uh, Marcela and Mirela as well, for contributing in this uh, chapter. And despite noticeable progress, particularly in terms of pushing the cooperation between uh, university and business in Albania, and this has been done by various state and non-state actors in the country, uh, we find that universities still face considerable challenges in terms of quality of uh, uh, research, transfer of knowledge, collaboration with stakeholders, and generation of innovation that has uh, uh, impact. And although most of the universities um, and some of the researchers participating in the study are part of the EU funding schemes, uh, uh, especially Erasmus Plus and less on Horizon uh, Europe, uh, universities still struggle to effectuate a meaningful collaboration with other actors and to generate an added value for the society. And this is what we try to argue for. The research study shows that in Albania, there is already, of course, cooperation between universities um, and businesses in particular. Maybe you can move to the next slide, please. 
um, approximately half of uh, the respondents confirmed that they cooperate with uh, uh, with business, but there is, uh, and then there is uh, cooperation in the second place, how to say, with uh, university and civil society, followed by policy and less with media, only uh, less, less than 25% cooperate with, with media. However, uh, there is little cooperation that is well institutionalized, uh, sustainable, well-funded and uh, promoted. And most of the existing collaborations uh, take place within um, the business sector, civil society and media as an individual approach of uh, individual researchers or academics rather than an institutionalized uh, approach. However, there is a positive development that we find um, in this study that when it comes to cooperating with policy actors, most of the cooperations are um, institutionalized within an institutional framework and have been more sustainable than the other ones. Uh, findings from the research study indicate that the main factors to hinder university to society collaboration include low funding of research, um, lack of information on both sides, uh, demand and supply side as well, um, about what can uh, be done jointly in a collaborative way and what universities can offer, and a lack of uh, strategy by all actors to do this in a strategic way and to include the idea of collaboration as an embedded uh, part of the culture of the organizational culture. Uh, most collaboration remain donor dependent, uh, maybe you can move on, and are project based, uh, primarily funded through the European Union or other donors operating in the country. Uh, um, and also for individual researchers, uh, this comes as a result of cooperating with particular think tanks in the center, in the, in the country. There are also limited uh, drivers and incentives for researchers to engage in this collaboration. So the, um, um, the fact that these collaborations are not necessarily recognized in the academic path and career for academics is of course a factor that hinders their incentive to uh, cooperate more and to invest more in, in building such, um, um, uh, such cooperation. However, there is, uh, in principle, willingness to cooperate with universities, but uh, Maggie, if you could, could move on, please. One more. Um, and one more. Yes, um, in principle, there is willingness to cooperate, but uh, there is clear indication that there is a gap in terms of uh, providing funding for such cooperation, networking opportunities, uh, capacity building and facilitation of, um, of this cooperation. The participants in the study across all four sectors that we have uh, um, assessed uh, confirm that um, uh, there are five main reason for, uh, reasons for involving in such uh, uh, collaboration, of course, for researchers, there is the issue of professional growth and increase in revenues, networking, knowledge exchange, public exposure, diversification of expertise. For universities, curricula development was mentioned as a very important factor and improving the quality of teaching and providing more opportunities for students. And some of the best practice that we have uh, mapped refer to students' internships that come as a result of the collaboration between universities of business, job fairs, organization and public or open forums but in most cases are ad hoc events that need to be further um, institutionalized and made more sustainable. Um, and this cooperation, of course, can help to um, um, reposition universities as engaged universities, which is this um, idea of the future of universities as being very closely linked to the social and economic challenges of the community that they are based on. And of course, such collaboration and joint cooperation could also help in terms of for quality of research and uh, uh, communication to diverse audiences. In terms of the recommendations um, and trying not to take uh, much time, uh, as I said, we provide a set of specific recommendations for uh, uh, universities and then for cooperation of universities with each actor. And then we look into policy, civil society and media. Um, ensuring quality of research is important because it has to do with the trust between actors and it has to do about building up expectations and realizing them. 
and also um, to provide useful and usable um, uh, results to multi multiple um, actors. Establish dedicated units that can coordinate such cooperation. OSEA will attempt to do exactly this, or so transfer uh, of knowledge and innovation offices. Uh, recognize and reward engagement uh, of staff with uh, working with business and other actors in society. Institutionalize the collaboration and develop the organizational culture in such a way that uh, um, uh, rewards such cooperation. Of course, for those who offer um, uh, communication or journalism curricula, it's very important to improve science and data journalism within the curricula um, so as to prepare the next generation of journalists who will then uh, hopefully uh, communicate and cooperate with uh, universities. Um, and for the business sector, of course, um, uh, maintaining this proactiveness in reaching out to universities and not only for uh, uh, student internships, but also for maintaining a regular dialogue that could support the um, uh, curricula improvement and for preparing the next generation of professional workers that are not only job ready, but are also life ready with skills such as uh, digital skills and green skills as well, considering the, the and that were already mentioned. Um, uh, for policy sector, it would be very interesting to provide some uh, incentives for businesses or SMEs who actually engage with universities uh, to increase the involvement of all online ministries because research, innovation and development is not only the duty of the Ministry of Education and also increase the visibility of successful case studies and of course uh, think about developing uh, uh, um, or expanding a science fund something that is already done by mastery, mastery now but could be further um, uh, improved and uh, also push for such collaboration to to be funded um, civil society actors or think tanks we discussed with um, had diverse opinions about this um, engagement however they are all in favor of the idea that such collaboration should be more institutional so as not to depend on the willingness of one person who then leaves from the institution and takes the knowledge and the experience with him. And also there is an opportunity with the European integration and consultation process and opening of the session negotiations that can uh, provide space for more uh, meaningful uh, joint projects and collaboration between the actors. Um, and then if we, uh, some recommendations for the media, of course, media is a Pandora box that we cannot probably open here today fully. However, there is space for uh, editorial policies to be more inclined toward um, uh, data journalism, fact checking, and uh, inviting more experts um, and researchers into the uh, mainstream media, but also as well on online media. And for donors and media organizations or civil society organizations, there is room to fundraise and to develop uh, various programs that can support uh, journalists and develop their skills on how to better work with, uh, with media. We will publish the full uh, study in English and um, um, uh, in Albanian as well, together with all the relevant annexes and methodology instrument immediately after this, um, this meeting on our website, but also we will uh, share it with you. And we hope that this will, of course, serve USIA definitely for the upcoming activities but the entire network to try and to advocate and push for um, uh, more for universities to spend their boundaries, but at the same time for other actors as well, to spend their boundaries, to move uh, out of their comfort zone and to try to engage in collaborative work that then can have a, um, an impact on our social and economic challenges. Thank you very much, Nvidia. Uh, thank you very much, Biryana, for the an overview actually of the work done and, uh, and the process or for sure some recommendations that uh, as I mentioned before, they will help uh, the UCIA project to customize the activities and follow up on the recommendation based on the stakeholders that we have in, quadru in our project in quadru uh, Quadruple Helix. So, the way that we thought about this roundtable is just uh, bringing in some of the our partners and or potential partner in the future, uh, talking about Quadrupa Helix, and that's the reason that we have today representatives of, of one of the aspects of the Quadrupa Helix or representing 
each as aspect. We have representatives from civil society, from media, uh, from uh, business, and uh, and donors as well. So I will give the floor first to Ariola Goli. It's Ariola Goli. Thank you for coming, Ariola. Uh, is from the National Civil Society Resource Center. Thank you, Navila, very much. <clears throat> it's okay. Sorry, I have an allergy because of the uh, heating, yeah. Uh, dear organizers and participants, uh, dear Deputy uh, Minister, uh, uh, Ms. Tolia, uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for the invitation uh, to this event uh, and to the panel to share our experiences, but also uh, perspectives uh, from the institutions that uh, we represent, um, uh, because this event is uh, very important for the uh, increase of uh, further cooperation among universities and important actors in the country that uh, contribute to the political, social, economic developments in Albania. Uh, my name is Ariola Goli and I work as um, uh, Director of Programs at Partners Albania and I'm managing the National Resource Center for Civil Society. And um, uh, the work uh, that National Resource Center for Civil Society is uh, doing uh, since uh, 2019 is in fact a program funded by EU uh, and implemented by partners um, is very much in line with uh, what you said. So I welcome very much, first of all, because it's, um, uh, uh, is uh, very much in line, as I said, with uh, the uh, contribution and creation of uh, further uh, potential bridges of cooperation among civil society organizations and universities. And uh, uh, the second um, uh, reason why I welcome an, uh, the invitation and think that the event is very important is because very little has been talked and discussed uh, until now with the actors on this topic. And um, uh, such discussion are very useful to further advance the mutual cooperation. And this is uh, very important. Uh, historically, in the last decades, uh, equitation between universities and civil society has not been the greatest in Albania. And we are all aware of this. And also the data of uh, the findings of the research uh, show it. Uh, today, uh, the world, but also Albania as part of it, is facing with critical um, uh, crisis like ever before, uh, pandemic of COVID-19, but also um, other uh, crises. Coexistence of social, economic, and political problems are posing crucial, sub substantial questions. Uh, production of new knowledge, uh, cutting across uh, disciplines, institutions, and perspectives is becoming more and more important in these conditions. The partnership between universities as uh, knowledge producers uh, and civil society as practitioners in these uh, circumstances assume uh, critical importance. Um, both universities and uh, civil society organizations are part of uh, civil society, in fact, although in Albania still we have, uh, when we talk on civil society, we identify only civil society organizations, but in fact is a, is a term a uh, more term. is a broader and included, includes also other actors and institutions uh, comprising here uh, universities, media, etc. Uh, there is a long standing international debate on how to bridge the gap between research and practice and improve communication between researchers and NGO uh, practitioners. And I'm happy that. Um, event like this uh, can contribute also to bring uh, this international debate also in, in Albania. Although there are many practitioners, academics, so people with an academic background who are actively engaged in civil society organizations, and also academic practitioners, so academics who are heavily uh, involved in uh, development practice, the interface between research and practice in relation to civil society organizations and universities remain uh, still superficial. And uh, many civil society organizations until now are engaged um, in um, uh, some in research initiatives and are, let's say, uh, in the in the last um, uh, 20 years have been a very good and uh, contribution um, uh, for uh, research and development in the country, uh, but also in monitoring and policy design. Uh, universities has not been involved that much in all this and uh, uh, is, uh, is very important uh, for, for them to take the advantage of all the circumstances created uh, um, um, with the, uh, especially with the access to funding, uh, in particular in uh, uh, EU funding uh, program for research and innovation uh, to take this advantage and um, 
um, um, let's say, uh, um, go uh, uh, advance in, uh, and do further steps in, uh, in improving their situation. Uh, we should, uh, both universities and civil society organization, we should use at maximum these opportunities and to connect uh, together in all senses uh, and coordinate and advance uh, our mutual partnership. Uh, of course, the situation uh, has, not been uh, has not been very, um, uh, let's say, easy. Collaborations until now has been non-essential formally, um, simply to respond mostly to the call for proposals. And um, uh, there is a number of other barriers in this process, including uh, the, knack, the lack of knowledge and um, networking um, uh, among both institutions. So universities from one side and civil society organizations from the other, but also bureaucracy in universities, in particular in, in uh, 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 state universities, in public universities. Um, I should um, 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 uh, emphasize here that the, uh, the private one has been uh, much more uh, in advance in all this and um, uh, more co collaborative in, uh, in different uh, pro joint projects. And uh, the third barrier has been the lack of networking and uh, uh, the lack of strategic long-term cooperation among, the, uh, among us. And um, um, I'd like to also in line with the, with the research, I'd like to um, say a few recommendations how we can uh, further imp improve our cooperation. Of course, the research and practitioners should network and uh, cooperate in a more strategic and uh, institutionalized, institutionalized way, not only for um, uh, ad hoc uh, project proposals and the funding opportunities, but in a more um, uh, using a more strategic thinking on how we can contribute together in the uh, areas that we uh, all work. Um, a second thing I think very important is the civil society to uh, work more and to commit towards contribution uh, and to contribute towards uh, um, the uh, 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 the accomplishment of university mission as education um, uh, and the knowledge producer producers institutions and um, of course uh, is very important and uh, this is something may maybe that uh, can be um, uh, explored also in a joint uh, partnership to uh, invite uh, experienced uh, practitioners uh, from uh, many um, fields uh, inside the university uh, campuses so we can um, have um, uh, different perspectives and uh, contribute uh, contributions from uh, uh, both sides. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariola. I appreciate your uh, your words. And yes, as Bliriana mentioned in our recommendation, I mean the finding was exactly that that uh, there hasn't been a, a real essential collaboration, but more in personal based. Yeah. So uh, yes, a lot of our colleagues at the university, they work in studies and research that the civil society does, but uh, that's it's more in personal terms rather than being very much institutionalized. And that has been the reason actually that in our USIA project, we have two civil society uh, organization part of the, of the partnership, the Center for uh, in Comparative and International Studies and CIDEV. So thank you for the recommendations. Okay. Yeah, um, I was. Okay. Uh, now the floor is to Ms. Valbona Cucci. We have her online. It's from the EU for Innovation. Valbona, the floor is yours. Can you hear us? See the slides. Valbona? I'm talking to her on WhatsApp. Just unmute yourself, please. The floor is yours. Okay, then we move to, mm -hmm. to the next one. Aurora will. Uh, our colleague from uh, 
<laughs> thank you, Nevila. I'm very happy to be here and I thank you for inviting me. I'm Aurora Sulcha, executive producer for business at uh, E2CNN, the affiliate of CNN in Albania. Also, I am uh, author and moderator of two uh, TV programs, E2 Business and uh, Business News. I'm very happy to be here and I want to share with you my experience with, um, uh, with the collaboration with universities. And indeed, um, I have a great uh, collaborations with uh, the academics, you know, most of uh, them are friends of mine from decade now and art and collaborators of my TV programs, not only at uh, A2CNN, but also in the other televisions that I was before at Aura News, News24. And I'm glad to say, and uh, without modesty that uh, that network that I have with uh, the experts and um, academics, universities, public and private uh, in Albania are the treasure uh, for me, the treasure that I cultivate more than uh, two decades of my work as a journalist. You know, uh, economy is not an easy sector, it's a difficult one and uh, we trade every sure of the local economy and international economy every day, not only in my uh, TV programs, but also in uh, news editions, because um, economy is the second sector more important in, in uh, uh, CNN, and we have the same philosophy as affiliate here. And um, in this um, case, we need to, to have experts every day. Experts, um, and this is uh, our choice, because uh, having experts and uh, academics from uh, universities, uh, public and private, um, is the best way to explain to people and uh, to audience um, uh, the, uh, the the right thing to to, to give the, the right information to to talk to them with uh, common and simply words and at the same time with a professionals uh, way and uh, really I have a great uh, uh, collaborator uh, collaborations with uh, experts and academics. I think um, uh, in every uh, TV programs that I make, I, I talk uh, with them. Elvin knows very well because he's one of my collaborator from uh, years now, Ira also, uh, Nevila, and I'm very happy to have them because uh, they, they are a great help in my work. They um, uh, help me to have another point of view of the case, of, of the topic that uh, we trade. Also, uh, we talk about statistics, very needed um, for the topic because we make uh, touchable for the people. I think the best um, expertise come from the universities, the experts uh, without uh, the political impact. And um, this is more uh, sensitive in uh, these days that uh, we have the pandemic, the impact impact in the economy, not only Albanian economy, but in global um, economy. And I think that the thought of the experts are now more important uh, than, uh, than before. So I, I am very thankful uh, to all the experts, to my network and to universities, not only to be part as academic, but, all, uh, but uh, above all, to have um, my, uh, to, 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 to be my collaborator collaborators and my TV programs as a journalist. I don't know what to say else because I have this, uh, um, this um, effective collaborators, uh, collaborations with the university, but if you have any question, I'm very happy to answer. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Aurora. I mean, that's uh, with uh, A2CNN Albania. It's yeah. a good, uh, actually, it's a success story of uh, academicians and university practitioners working with media. Definitely, one of the findings was that we have to work more with you. <laughs> and there are some good recommendations in that regard. And I think uh, uh, the participants here will add more to the, to the fact. I'll leave the floor to Mr. Inorbeka. Okay, we'll give it to Valbona. Okay, so thank you, Valbona. I know that uh, our voice comes a little bit later to you, huh? postponed. <laughs> Valbona, can you hear us? Yes. 
Balbona, are you there? Albona, can you try again, please? <laughs> From uh, National Democratic Institute, uh, part of the project support to parliament and civic education. Thank you, Nevila. Thank you for the invitation, Honorable Deputy Minister Tolle colleagues and friends. It is a great pleasure to be here today amongst representatives from academia, from the market Mark. and government. I mean, the triangle. But I will, as a representative of NDI, I will focus more on the relation between the government and the academia. academia. So for, for over 30 years, our institute has been working around the world to help set up democratic institutions. And we place a lot of focus on building institutions that are effective, that are responsive, that are transparent and inclusive. And one of the messages that we pass on to our partner institution is how important is access to information and data, to evidence in carrying out their work and in making policy and budget uh, uh, decisions. So to this end, we point out that universities and their re uh, research centers are and should be a reliable source of information and expertise that helps policymakers guide their decisions, deliberation and decisions on policies. Recently, we are promoting in many countries around the world the idea for public institution to institution to establish specialized units within their structure who are responsible to facilitate a more structured interaction and cooperation between the institution and universities, but also the think tank uh, community. And this is not new. We've seen it with the Congress Research Service, European Parliament Research Service, the UK uh, Parliamentary Office for Science and Technology, but also parliamentary institutes established in many countries uh, across Western Europe. In Albania, with the support of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, we are helping the parliament here to establish a parliamentary institute of its own an institute whose role would be to provide evidence, data, reliable, impartial research to members of parliament in order to effectively scrutinize policies and proposals coming from the government, but also in guiding deliberation, discussions on policies and decision making. Uh, here, we're trying to help parliament with the new institute to establish ties cooperation with universities in an institutionalized way to bring that expertise on board, but also introduce uh, programs such as internships or fellowships. With the former, you provide an opportunity for students. We're now piloting it with a group of 20 students, giving them the opportunity to uh, be part of parliamentary processes. But at a later point, this institute could also facilitate uh, partnerships or cooperation with scholars, people who are doing their MAs or PhDs who can work with the parliament, use the information and data available, and at the same time, share their expertise and experience with the researchers in parliament. We have also noted, just recently piloted a cooperation with the Stanford University uh, uh, Center for Deliberative Democracy, our partners are at IDM, to see how a scientifically guided social experiment can help public institutions revisit their approaches to public consultation and solicit effectively uh, a citizens' input on, uh, uh, on decision-making. So in conclusion, I'd just uh, 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 like to emphasize that in our view, greater cooperation between public institutions and universities has a twofold effect of A, improving the quality of policy and B, increasing support for and visibility of uh, uh, universities. Thank you.
Oh, thank you, Renar. I really appreciate your intervention. We know now that the project has been successful. Some very good students uh, have been support to the MPs with good research and good impact. So we know that you have another initiative for create the Institute. Uh, it will follow up on other countries that they have good uh, expertise and, and things to share. So I uh, hope this all goes well as you planned. And here are the universities to have them on board too, to have more cooperation with them. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, I'll give the floor to Mr. Agin Fiola, uh, a very old collaborative with the university. Thank and you. Uh, I was just thinking that I have to replace your name with somebody else. And I was like, no, I want Agim to say something about it. But happy you back. So coming from Balfin Group, Business for Students program, right? It, in fact, it's B for Students. It okay. stands Balfin for Students. Ah, it's Balfin for Students, not Business for but Students. But Balfin uh, is business, it's, it's so business. It, it's okay. So we can't okay. translate even, it. Even Balfin, yeah. <laughs> Or business. Okay, our subconscious <laughs> translated into business, but Balfin is business. That's fine. Wrong. So it's the director of communication at Balfin Group. Thank you, Gimi, for coming. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here and discuss about universities that, in fact, are much related with the, the future. And when I say the future is the future of uh, business as well. Even without knowing the result of uh, your study, we had some uh, feedback from our HRs mostly. They are very, uh, very, I mean, they are not very satisfied about the, what we are getting from universities. So some of them are even stating it that we are directly looking at work experience, not even universities, not what, whatever they have studied. I mean, employees, future employees. So for this reason, and not only that, we produced uh, we produced, we created uh, B for students. That is uh, our total support to universities and students. We have developed a program that is uh, divided in four key pillars. The first one is business ideas. We want students to understand how business work and we want to support them as well with their initiatives. That's why we created business ideas. We are giving support to students that have uh, business ideas. We support them with offering uh, 5,000 euros for each uh, project that is uh, awarded as a good idea. As well, inside the business, we have this business challenge. Business challenge is another program developed uh, inside B for Students. Uh, we have social clubs that is for supporting uh, social ideas that students may have. We have the empowerment pillar. Empowerment pillar means that direct contribution to universities, mostly public universities. Uh, we have more than six contracts, six uh, agreements with universities. We are supporting with revising curricula, mostly in marketing and uh, business management. We are offering open lectures. For all, the, for all the universities that are in this list. And the final pillar is internship. We have developed a very, I, I believe that is one of the best in Albania, where students participate, they uh, have to compete with each other. It's a real interview for work. So even those that are not uh, selected in the end of the process, they uh, gain this practical knowledge, how to manage interviews. Uh, we did all of this to support universities and to support ourselves as well. So uh, starting from this year, most probably we will launch the same program in Kosovo. We are still discussing it, but we want to strengthen it in uh, Albania. That's why this, uh, this meeting together with you, it's, uh, it's good to create uh, connections. You may be to know uh, better the B for Student program and so to push it forward in other uh, universities as well. So far, we have more than uh, 858 students that have participated in all these pillars by offering ideas, competing to business ideas and business challenges in social clubs and in internship. Obviously, internship is the, the most successful pillar. <laughs>
Well, that's a good opportunity to university to first maybe to invite you as a speaker and to open up the discussion with our students and uh, and to our colleagues too. Yeah. So thank you for coming, Gimi. I don't know if we have, we still have Albona online. I am online, but I can't, I don't know whether you can hear me. Now we hear you. Thank you very much. Albona okay. <laughs> Kuchi, you from innovation. Thank you very much. Yeah, apologies for the technical hiccups, but probably this is what it takes. And I'm sorry that I'm not there in person due to yeah, health reasons, but um, yeah, very happy to join this very interesting panel and, and, uh, and, and meeting actually. A big thank you, first of all, to the organizers for inviting you for innovation program, um, because um, probably they also sensed and know due to previous um, cooperation, uh, the focus and the target group of EU for, EU for innovation program as well. Um, I'll just start showing also the slides very quickly so that it becomes a little bit informative. Are the slides already on, um, Liliana? They are, yes. Yes, so I'll just uh, walk through the slides and then I'll say next uh, when I'm done with it. Um, I'm very happy that actually one of the speakers beforehand, the uh, EU delegation representative, Mrs. Uh, uh, Sinakold, already mentioned EU for Innovation Program. Um, yeah it already provided a great outlook to the future as well. But what I'm going to do at the moment is basically look a little bit back what this program has been doing in the past uh, two and a half years when it comes to improving the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem in Albania. Uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Um, well, as you probably know, this program is funded by um, European Union uh, coming uh, and additional funds are coming actually from Germany and Sweden. And the implementing agencies of this program are GIZ Albania and uh, CEDA uh, from the Swedish government. Next slide, please. Well, um, the objective of this program was, of course, uh, to boost the creation of startups um, in Albania, but also primarily to strengthen the innovation ecosystem. And I would like also to mention that, of course, uh, this program um, did conduct uh, gap analysis and studies uh, beforehand to see and understand where are the players standing actually? Because when it comes to the players of the innovation ecosystem, at the moment, the program looked into the triple helix. So the, um, yeah, looked into the, the business um, uh, sector, the startups, um, the innovation support organization, looking also into universities, but also at the government. And interestingly enough, the gap analysis back then, so two and a half years ago, found more or less what also uh, Bleriana in their study uh, found today, actually, that there is um, unfortunately still very little output of research in general when it comes to commercial uh, research. Uh, there is very uh, weak cooperation between universities and the private sector, of course. It started to change luckily uh, over the, the, the course of the last years, but still there is a lot to be done. And of course the universities only, um, yeah, still offer the, the typical traditional education and very few of them have grasped the, the, the challenge and also the opportunities to offer entrepreneurship promotion in universities. And uh, of course, uh, some of the universities, all, all of them also limit or lack a little bit structures and capacities to offer startup incubation programs. Next slide, please. Um, so what uh, EU for Innovation program was doing, understanding that the ecosystem is quite important, um, is actually, uh, as I mentioned earlier, looking into a little bit all the players, universities, the private sector, the innovation support organizations or the so-called incubators, accelerators, co-working spaces, but also trying to cooperate with development organization, definitely the government and so on and forth. But then targeting also the services to the major triple helix group. So what the program has been doing is of course offering capacity development primarily by GIZ Albania to strengthen the capacities of the innovation in startups and Albanian ecosystem. It was offering linkages and collaboration, some access to finance or financial support, 
but also framework conditions. So working, trying to work a little bit uh, closer with the government, primarily the Ministry of um, Economy and Finance, but also other line ministries like the one of education and the Minister of State for the Protection of Entrepreneurship and a few agencies in there. Next slide, please. Yeah, just to give you a very quick overview of what this program was doing, because actually, as you probably know, um, what uh, this framework program offers is yeah, um, long-term and short-term expertise. Uh, GIZ is primarily offering technical assistance. So what we were doing was linking um, the Albanian beneficiaries in the groups mentioned above with the international expertise. And there were a few, few uh, there was a series of interventions or products as we called them, uh, that were actually targeting various groups. Uh, a few of them to mention are the masterclass series or um, the regional ecosystem development. The startup, the startup law support that was provided to the ministry uh, and is already being provided still now um, and so on and forth basically. As you see, there is a series of interventions that are targeting different groups. Um, but I would like to just very shortly focus into the ones linked to the universities. So next slide, please. Because it was really understood not only through the gap analysis, but also uh, working already closely with a few actors in the ecosystem among the universities, be those public as well as private, that they really um, need uh, uh, capacity development. So a few interventions that were targeting universities were the masterclass series. There were a couple of uh, series focusing first of all on entrepreneurial universities, but also later on teaching entrepreneurship. So it was quite obvious that there were a lot of pockets of excellence out there, a lot of professors and teaching teachers teaching, I mean, uh, courses related to entrepreneurship were very much eager and interested into improving their courses and even curriculas of entrepreneurship in universities. Another flagship intervention of our program is the Tirana Inc. Uh, that stands for um, uh, Tirana Incubation, which is a multi-university affiliated incubation program um, uh, established in cooperation with five universities, two of which are uh, public, which is Tirana University and Polytechnic University, and three others are private in partnership with the city of Tirana. The idea of Tirana Inc. is to become uh, a destination for aspiring entrepreneurs among students, to incubate their ideas and to set up their businesses. This um, program is already uh, up and running. Uh, currently, we are conducting the first pilot program. It's one program, 10 teams being incubated for 100 days and the demo day of this long journey of, exp of, of experience uh, uh, will basically be in mid-December, uh, probably very soon and information will be provided later on. But the success story of Tirana Inc, as also some other speakers mentioned earlier, is the fact that you don't only bring students who are passionate about um, entrepreneurship together, but you also link them with the know-how coming from academia, with the mentors, you link them to the corporates. We already have many companies uh, supporting Tirana Inc, um, not only this pilot program, but also the future of it. And of course, there is a lot of ecosystem actors who are supporting this initiative because obviously it was um, yeah, a missing piece into the puzzle of entrepreneurship and incubation uh, and acceleration programs in Albania. Um, another quite interesting intervention that relates to universities is, for example, the spending, spending boundaries training program. I mean, a few of you are present there already know about it. It's uh, something that it's a possibility that is offered by our program to very few selected um, people from the Albanian ecosystem, from academia, uh, NGO uh, scenarios, uh, landscapes and so on, uh, on and forth to actually participate in this training program to become agents of bridging the gap between academia and industry. Um, yeah, another quite interesting intervention of, of the program that it's becoming flagship is also Connect IT. Um, which aims to bring together students who are still studying, but have the uh, technical know-how 
into the CIT to the companies and businesses uh, offering very easy digital solutions for them, aiming that in the future they could be really uh, partners basically. And among that, there has been a few more uh, activities and interventions that were there to basically uh, give a little bit more activation and light to the students, universities, academia, and so on and forth, like the hackathons or the webinar series or inspirational talks and so on and forth. So in a nutshell, yeah, next slide, please. But I already uh, talked about it quite substantially. Mm, very shortly mentioning that this program was operating also on demand base. So there, there has been a few universities that requested um, additional support, technical support from the program to implement or to set up their own activities linked to the student uh, uh, entrepreneurship promotion and so on and forth. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, it's basically uh, the final slide. But I would uh, also like to mention that indeed this program will end uh, in March 2022, but there is a green light for second phase. And um, as also Miss Jenny mentioned earlier, the focus of the second phase will definitely be to, uh, yeah, to make Albania, to bring Albania, to expose Albanian startups and innovation ecosystem and its stakeholders to wider audience focusing into further uh, supporting the ecosystem to grow, having a very specific um, yeah, pillar uh, towards quadruple helix, so really looking and trying to, to have this approach applied among the four um, yeah, uh, group actors, uh, providing more information and access to finance, but also promote Albanian ecosystem internationally and nationally. So this is it in a nutshell. Thank you very much. I hope it was um, yeah, kind of understood to the audience. Thank you, Valbona, very much. I think uh, all the participants appreciated what you said and uh, introduced for those who are not familiar with the EU for innovation, the pillars and the importance of the program in Albania and very much related to what UCIA is trying to, to promote with this project. Uh, just adding up something that uh, is not that we are missing, in, but it's part of the puzzle of what we will be doing in the future. Uh, it was going to be the next thing that uh, we work with diaspora too. Academia and diaspora needs to work together too. So we be thinking of this and we open for sure for collaboration in that regard. We open also having networks with other donors and uh, having, when we say university to society, we don't want to miss this also. So maybe next time when we will have another activity, we'll have speakers in our workshop from diaspora and why not from donors working in that, uh, in that field, in the quadruple helix and, and farther. So I really appreciate your participation today. So I'll give the 20 minutes, the floor to participants to discuss about uh, know-how, best practice, uh, or why not recommendations on how we can further develop the quadruple helix within this project, but not only. Uh, the work done with the study is just uh, the fundamentals for our future activities, but I think it's a, it's a good start for Albania also to have a paper to discuss on to have some findings, to have recommendation. Uh, we did not mention before, but uh, before coming to this event, there were peer-to-peer. Uh, uh, -peer, so each university has its own results. There were five universities included. They are partner at the, at the project. Uh, it's the Mediterranean University of Albania, uh, European University of Tirana, it's uh, Professional College of Tirana, it's University of Duras and University of Škodra. So I would like to thank you everybody that is online, that they've been part of our process. And uh, I'm sure that the findings for each university will be a good guide for, uh, for work and uh, why not for other papers and good conferences, but definitely good partnership with all the actors of the Quadruple Helix. So I'll leave the floor to, to the participants here and online. Uh, there are only 20 minutes discussion. I'm sorry, we cannot leave it longer, then uh, I'll give later on the word to Abby to make some remarks on the event. 
So it's hard sometimes to just break the... <laughs> Amundsen Dufial? Okay. Nevila? 